okay so all right so let's uh, uh, now so that's uh, so far as uh, the uh, the basics of uh, an LPTV system are concerned and uh, uh, please remember that this is all the these are all the steps that uh, we did we underwent when uh, we talked about time invariant systems in your early classes right uh, you know the Fourier transform of the input you want to find uh, you know the Fourier transform of the output and convolution and uh, what happens when you put e to the j 2 pi f t all that stuff is what we uh, we are used to doing for a time invariant system. Now, we have also done the same thing for a linear periodically time varying system and uh, you know uh, I hope you see the, uh, uh, the, uh, the analogy uh, rather that the mechanics is, uh, is similar, but it is a little more complicated in the sense that you now have to worry about output frequencies that are not merely f, but f plus you know all this stuff right. Then when we were studying time invariant circuits, uh, then we said ok well uh, you know let us try and how do we uh, well you have uh, you know let us take our uh, simple example of uh, our good old uh, first order RC filter. And uh, if you want to compute the frequency response of uh, this filter, what will we do? Oh well, we will number the nodes and we will write the, I mean ok, you, I mean you, you, you might argue that well this is such a simple circuit that I might, I might uh, simply do it by hand, but uh, if you want to do it systematically, I mean you would basically say oh well let us write the, uh, write down the, the MNA equations except that they are now in the frequency domain. So, what are the, uh, uh, the, uh, the unknowns, uh, the two node voltages and So, we should write down the phases V1 and V2 are uh, uh, the unknowns and uh, this is Vi uh, which is uh, uh, 1 angle 0 right. So, uh, I sub S is the phasor of the voltage through the, uh, of the of the phasor of the current through the voltage source and uh, this must be the right hand side we find only all the in independent sources and this is 1 angle 0 correct and can you help me if, if, uh, 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 fill out uh, the entries of the matrix what do we do yeah can you hear I mean uh, I know I knew that too but uh, very good so this is G uh, between 1 and 2. So, this is node 1, this is node 2, g minus g minus g plus g and for the capacitor j 2 pi. Remember, we are working with phasors uh, uh, at certain frequency. So, it is plus j 2 pi f c ok. And uh, uh, what do we do? Here this becomes uh, 1, correct? And here you get a 1, a 0, and V2 equals 1, right? And then you solve this equation, uh, this uh, uh, the solve the set of equations and in one shot you have all the stuff that you wanted namely node voltage uh, at uh, 1, node voltage at 2 and the current through the source that is is right all straightforward stuff. Now, let us say this is the LTI case. Now, the question is what happens when again let us take our simple example of the RC circuit except that the 
is again the same old phasor at frequency f, this is c, this is now uh, g of t, let us say this is varying periodically, I do not know, I mean uh, in some periodic way, right, where this is Tx, correct. So, what comment can we make about uh, the voltage and current uh, in any branch or at any node? Huh? I mean, will therefore contain 2f and 3f and so on? Yeah, so basically any node voltage can be expressed as as what? It is a linear system, right? You are exciting this linear system with, with a tone at f, right? Okay. So, every output will therefore consist of tones at, at frequencies of the form f plus k times f s, correct? And therefore, uh, uh, in a time invariant system, you would just simply have one phasor which uh, um, basically denoted the uh, the complex amplitude of uh, at the frequency f. Now, you need what? If you want to find the uh, specify the voltage as, uh, at a certain node or a current to a certain branch, right, and you have to express it as, uh, as a phasor. What would you do earlier? You needed in a time invariant system, there is only one frequency, uh, you know, f, and therefore, you the voltage at node 1 would simply be you would perhaps call it v1, correct. Now, what do you, uh, uh, what situation are we faced with? At any node, you have multiple frequencies. So, by necessity, you basically need to have, you express that as, uh, as a phasor, right with, uh, let us say we call it right, where that V sub k, I mean now you know it just becomes a notation uh, a nightmare because you have a number for the node, you have a number for the harmonic, I mean you know, uh, right. and. Uh, so, it is not uncommon to kind of look at uh, you know you open up you know uh, either a book or a paper where they are talking about this stuff and then you know you see a uh, sea of symbols right uh, and then uh, 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 as soon as you see that you close the book and then you know you pick up Calvin and Hobbes and start reading because that is a lot more interesting. Hmm? Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, there is a indeed uh, a little bit of mess involved and we have to be a little careful. Uh, so, so now uh, the, the voltage at a node uh, is now not merely characterized by one uh, phasor, but you need to associate complex amplitudes uh, to every tone that is there at that node. So, in general we basically say oh well, uh, you know, let us keep our life simple, we uh, uh, are at least our notation simple. So, we will put all these uh, these uh, complex amplitudes uh, uh, in a column vector and that basically we will call this uh, right, this, uh, this V, okay. Uh, is basically a, a, a column vector uh, corresponding to the voltage at node 1, right. And this column vector simply has got the set of all these, these guys here. 
all right. So, and now I mean what is the advantage of this whole thing? Well, you know now you do not have to write this messy expression, you just basically say well this is nothing but uh, v that v underscore is just stuff that I use here to be able to distinguish uh, you know a vector from uh, a scalar right and uh, so v1 basically is this the set of all numbers that uh, that are in in this equation correct so likewise uh, you know i don't know i mean if you have uh, i sub s so this uh, this is also now a uh, a vector of of uh, of phasor quantities right where each term in the in the vector basically quantifies the strength of well, this is the strength of uh, uh, each frequency in that uh, in that current. Okay, all right. So uh, now the uh, now we would write KCL and KVL, correct? And uh, fortunately, what comment can we make about uh, KCL and KVL? I mean, it's of course it's still valid, right? But it must be valid for in a time invariant system, I mean there is only one frequency, so there is no confusion, right. Where here there are multiple frequencies, so KCL and KVL must be valid for, for all frequencies, correct. So it is just that, you know, uh, so let us assume uh, for argument's sake that uh, we say, oh well, the first thousand harmonics of V, uh, uh, you know, in other words, we are only interested in, we assume that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, amplitude of tones at frequencies beyond say k equal to 1000 become you know negligibly small right ideally that the summation goes from minus infinity to infinity but we you know we say let us say you know uh, we are happy with uh, uh, saying well beyond k equal to 1000 those amplitudes are so small we don't worry about them correct so then uh, how many sets of kcl kvl equations will you have now in the time invariant case, we had three equations, three uh, you know, uh, three unknowns. Now, how many equations will we have? If you restrict k to be thousand, then well, uh, it is not uh, uh, three thousand, but it is six thousand because uh, you go from minus thousand to thousand uh, uh, for each one of them. So you have uh, roughly two thousand unknowns here, uh, two thousand here, and two thousand here. Right. So basically, what was uh, what do you call uh, uh, you, uh, you know literally child's play, right? Now even a simple first order RC network now becomes uh, you know a set of equations uh, you know six thousand variables uh, in uh, okay. Uh, fortunately, once you know you understand the principles, you uh, uh, you have uh, what do you call uh, a whole lot of uh, I mean, you know, you now once you know how to write this these equations systematically, you will then can go and plop them into a computer and then you know get the solution. But uh, that's basically uh, what you do, right?